This video is for scratch builders and anyone who uh, wants to have a better understanding of the NMRA standards, uh, how they work and why they're important to modelers. Um, what we're hoping to do is dispel a few myths about the standards. Um, mainly one is that there, there's something wrong with them and uh, actually there's, there's nothing wrong with the standards. Um, they work very well. Um, I think the, the biggest problem over the years is uh, people misinterpreting the standards and uh, not applying them properly. And uh, hopefully with this, this video we can clear up some of the misconceptions about the standards and how they work. Um, mainly uh, that the standards are all interrelated with each other. Um, the numbers you see on the screen here, uh, every one of those numbers is relative to the number beside it. Uh, so you can't really adjust one number and not affect the others, uh, especially the flange way. And uh, we hope to explain that in this video uh, and we'll summarize with a case study of, a, of an actual turnout and show how the numbers can be uh, moved around and how they relate to each other. Okay, I'm just going to do a, a quick summary of the terminology I'm going to use in these videos so you know what I'm, uh, what I'm talking about when I refer to various parts of a turnout. Um, what we're looking at here is an HO scale number 8 code 83 turnout. It's a nice generic one and that'll it'll suit our purposes for these videos. I'm going to work from the outside in and I'll start with the stock rails. Shown here in green. Um, next from the outside in would be our guard rails. And these flank the, uh, the two stock rails on the outside. Next will be the closure rails. Shown here, um, I this is a, a shorter turnout. I didn't bother drawing the switch points or anything beyond the frog as uh, this, beyond the scope of what these videos are going to refer to. Um, but the two closure rails are also connected to the points and terminate at the wing rails. Shown here. Now the the two wing rails flank the uh, frog point rails shown here and uh, another area that I'm going to be referring to quite often is the uh, frog point and I'll zoom in real tight here which uh, the frog point is uh, the sharp point on the end of our frog rails and one other area um, I wanted to discuss is the flange way um, not really a part on the turnout more of an area and I've highlighted that area here in green um, the flange way is the space between the frog point rails and the wing rails and uh, just as the name describes that's where the flange of the wheel will ride down uh, and that pretty well covers it what we're looking at here is a uh, typical set of wheels um, specifically these are HO scale RP25 code 110 wheels um, RP25 refers to the NMRA recommended practice that uh, governs the shape and design of the uh, tread and the flange. The 110 or the code 110 is the, the width of the wheel from the back of the wheel to the outside of the wheel and uh, that's a, a fairly key number in designing a turnout. In fact the, uh, the width of the wheel tread really is what drives the design of a whole turnout. Um, as you'll see as we get farther into the video the uh, the flange way uh, is uh, the relationship between the uh, wheel tread and the flange way is, is key and we try and make that uh, flange way width as small as possible to work well with the wheels that we're running on it so it really does drive the design of a whole turnout. There's another size uh, that you may be familiar with they are uh, code 88 wheel sets uh, some, sometimes referred to as, uh, as fine scale wheels and uh, they're pretty much the same design except for they have a, a finer tread on it um, like this it's uh, 88 thousandths of an inch and uh, as you'll see that uh, using a narrower wheel on a standard turnout can cause some operational issues and uh, I'll explain a little more detail further in the video of what those issues are and, uh, and how we can work around them. And the key sizes on a, on a set of wheels are the uh, check gauge and the back-to-back -back gauge. Uh, the check gauge uh, shown here is uh, a measurement from the back of one of the wheels shown here, that's the, the back of the flange, to the inside edge of the tread shown here in green. 
and that's our check gauge. And that uh, check gauge is, is um, a number that's relative to the check gauge on a turnout, and they work, uh, they have a relationship between the two. Um, for our purposes, we really aren't concerned with what that number really is. Uh, the best we can do is just set the wheel gauge to the NMRA standards and uh, using the standards gauge, and that should uh, give us a, a set of wheels that will run great on any turnout that's built around the NMRA specs. The other size is uh, a back-to-back -back measurement, and like it sounds, that's the distance from the back of one wheel tread, shown in green here, to the back of the other wheel tread, shown in green here. And again, it has a corresponding dimension on a turnout, which uh, is referred to in the specs as the span on the turnout. Um, that's the same as the back-to-back -back distance here. And uh, controlling that distance, the back-to-back, -back is key uh, to make sure that the, the wheels will work well with the, uh, with the turnout. And uh, I'll explain that in more detail in the, uh, further in the video.